Well, Rastafari, over the past century, you know, if you just round it off, you know, the liberty of Rastafari is the liberty that has been embraced by the entire world presently. So when the Rastafari used to say, uh, marijuana heals glaucoma and tuberculosis and all these different types of conditions and cancer, people used to laugh at what the Rastafari used to say. When Rastafari used to say, well, we don't want no metal planes and we don't want no fossil fuels and we want ital and natural liberty, people used to laugh. But right now, everyone is actually... Em if you say, well, you don't believe in um, what they would call um, um, that, that thing about... about um, um, how do you call this thing there again? That thing is the, 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 the greenhouse effects and all these different aspects they call about... Uh, I, I think we spoke about it yesterday. Climate change. Yeah, climate change. When Rastaman used to speak about it, if now you say, well, climate change does not exist, right, they'd say you are cuckoo, you're not scientific. And Rastafari, um, within the Caribbean region, is basically the foundation of actually securing and living a, an ecologically sustainable lifestyle. And even when you go into food, you know, so right now you have several movements, the vegan, vegetarian, you have the alkaline, you know, but the foundation of that is the Rastafari. So the Rastafari is a man that actually taught people of the Aital liberty, you know, cooking in clay pots, which is the highest form of cooking, um, raw food liberty, you know, um, drinking natural spring waters, you know, how you bathe, how you keep up yourself. So all these things there, um, fully, you know, through, through science, you could critically, you could examine and say, well, wait, what the Rastafari have been saying for the past 50 years is the truth. You know, so right now, because probably you might read The Lancet and you might see, well, the triterpenoids or the terpenes in the roots of cannabis is, uh, contain cytotoxic properties, so the roots of ganja could actually kill cancer cells, then you might want to believe, right? So if somebody might tell you, well, okay, well, you must um, stop using um, styrofoam, you know, because the styrofoam contains dioxins or, or, or what they call endocrine disruptors, you might believe. But the Rastafari is the first one who came with what you call this biodegradable, with calabash. You know, and things that actually could reintegrate itself into nature naturally. So the, sci the scientific nature of the Rastafari liberty is one that has actually proven itself through time. And because science is basically observation, if you observe the Rastafari, you would see that presently, you know, most of, even with the whole aspect of COVID, you know, um, if you do a, a scientific study and see how many Rastafari really died from COVID, you know, I mean, I don't think you'd be surprised. You, you'd know that, you'd see, well, I mean, the Rastafari was very strong and resilient when it comes to viruses and other what you call infectious diseases. Alkaline is a buzzword in health circles, but no one seems to clearly understand what it means to be alkaline. Please explain what it means for one's body to be alkaline and the benefits. Well, alkaline, alkaline is basically, to understand what alkaline is, you must understand what they call the pH scale. The pH basically just means hydrogen potential. So the pH scale runs, runs from 1 to 14. So you are from 1 to 6, is a 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, .6 is an acid, right? So the, the hydrogen potential is lower than the alkaline. So the alkaline is 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this means that it has a high hydrogen potential. So all it means is that Okay, you have a base and you have an acid. So all this does is that it creates a particular environment for the functioning of the physical structure. Now your physical structure is not like, like a, a wall or, or, or this piece of wood. The physical structure is dynamic. So you have different aspects of your physical structure, different locations that operate more effectively in different pH. Right? So your mouth is alkaline. Your stomach is acidic. Your duodenum, which is the small intestines, is alkaline. Right? And the rest of your intestines is alkaline. But your blood itself is, is, is in an alkaline state. Right? So for us to understand, well, look, we say, well, which, act, which aspects of the physical structure? So you talk about your immune system, which is basically the, the defense system of your physical structure. You're talking about the, 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 the component of your physical structure that sees um, 
An antigen, what they refer to as a threat, could be a virus, could be a cancer cell, could be any type of thing, and then defends it. How does this thing they work? What environment do they work better in? So they do work better in an alkaline environment. But it does not mean that if you take a litmus paper and you test that food and that food there is alkaline, it does not mean that the effect upon the physical structure will be alkaline. Right? So you also must understand metabolism. So let's say you take a sour orange or you take a seeded lime, a key lime, even if it contains citric acid. And it is an acid, if when you utilize it within your physical structure, the outcome of it, the product of it, is alkalizing of your physical structure. So I think that many people think that being alkaline is like a litmus paper test, right? But that's not what it is, right? It is actually living in a particular way that, that puts your physical structure in that perfect state whereby it could operate in an optimal position. And we don't really subscribe to alkaline. We subscribe to ITAL, the ITAL levity. Because one of the key things that we must understand, even if you embrace and you learn from people, but the mere fact of the matter is, is that the Rastafari, right, years ago, were telling people of how to actually consume what they're supposed to eat. Now people have created this economic module, right, and they push out the Rastafari out of it and behaves like as if it's something new. So it's nothing new. So what has been rebranded as vegan, I say, oh, you have a vegan restaurant, or what has been rebranded as alkaline, right, the Rastafari has been doing it a long time ago. So if you have to go to the root of the matter and you, you, you take off all the, the rubbish and all the wraps and everything around it, what you'll get is italivity, right? Which is basically the Rastafari telling you, eat what you plant, all right? Eat what you grow, okay? So it's not because someone say, well, oh, quinoa is or, or, um, alkaline or, or um, phonio is alkaline and you don't understand that phonio went through a genetic process to become phonio. You know, quinoa had to go through a process Right, so if, if quinoa comes from South America and you're in Jamaica, and, and okay, you see you had the pandemic the last time, there are no boats coming, so what are you going to eat? Right, so let us see then, how is it that the, the Rastafari leave it? It says, okay, well, what, what is within our appro appropriate environment that we could utilize to ensure that our physical structure operates on the optimal level? So it's not just about saying that you are alkaline because you're buying and you're importing stuff, but overstanding that, um, the, the holistic aspect of it that you are in a position whereby you are self-sufficient, whereby your hands could put a seed in the soil, you could nurture it with your energy, right, and you could see it grow, you could harvest it and you could bring it into your kitchen and you could plant and you could eat, right, because plenty of people don't understand that even if you eat alkaline or you are vegan or you plant-based, you still get breast cancer, you still get fibroids, you know, you still get polycystic ovarian syndrome. Why? Because your thoughts can acidify your blood. Right? So 70% of your reality is based upon your emotions. So we pass that stage where you're talking about, okay, well, you have to eat that. So if you, have, if you, you could eat as good as you want to eat. If your mental pattern is not clean and pure and you are highly stressed, that means that your blood would be, would be just filled with cortisol and filled with norepinephrine, adrenaline, and then boop. I mean, your immune system is suppressed. Right? If somebody sneezes in China, you catch it in Jamaica. Right? So it is important that we look at it holistically and we fully embrace um, the work of our ancestors, the, the ancient Rasta man who actually taught us the true liberty a long time ago. How can one naturally boost their serotonin and dopamine? Well, to know, um, to, you see, people that just want to do things, not understanding what the things are. So you, the first question is, what is serotonin? What is dopamine? Right? Serotonin is a feel-good hormone. Dopamine is like, is if, you, if you touch this and it feels good, right, and you like that feeling, the reason you like that feeling is because the, the sensation of the hood makes your, 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 your cells your, in, in your brain called the substantia negra, right, create that particular biochemical color hormone, dopamine, that gives you that pleasant feeling, oh, I love that hood, so you feel good, right, so serotonin, dopamine, also you have oxytocin. These are the three hormones that are responsible for putting you in this type of good state of being, perfect peace and bliss, right? So when you're happy, you feel good, you feel contented, you feel like satisfied, you feel that you are in a good place. If you extract blood from your bloodstream, what you're going to find is serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. So these are the, these biochemicals that actually um, correspond to that emotional state. So you have to understand that the physical structure, though it is a physical structure, you are physical, you have blood, you have teeth, you have bones, you have skin, you have hair, 
right? Emotion, which is your, your, the other aspect of you, is your emotional self. So if I tell you touch love or touch anger or touch hate or touch betrayal, you cannot really touch certain type of aspects of yourself. But what your brain does, because your brain is basically that, um, that manufacturer that, that converts that emotional energy. So you see something outside there and you, you like it, it makes you feel good, then your physical structure has to respond in that manner. So what your brain does now, so your emotional aspect, right, which is different, you see it emotionally, you see, oh wow, that's a beautiful thing. Then your brain has to make you feel good. So your brain then begins to say, okay, all right, and produce serotonin. Okay, all right, produce some um, oxytocin, produce dopamine, just so that your, 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 your physical structure can feel that sensation of happiness and love and, and contentment. So to the first step into boosting these things there is to be in at that space whereby 80% of your thoughts are supposed to be positive and uplifting thoughts. Right? So your thoughts, what you think, is what makes your brain produce it. Now, alternatively, if it is that you, you have depression or you bipolar or you have Parkinson's disease or you have any of these conditions, then you might take L-Dopa, which is a synthetic form of dopamine, or you might go and take um, Prozac because you want to boost up your serotonin because you're depressed. Right? But if you understand how to control your thoughts, you could naturally boost it up just through mind work. Then you have herbs like, like um, the cocoa, the cocoa, like cocoa, like real cocoa, cocoa boosts up your serotonin. That's why people love chocolate. It makes you feel good. So you eat some, some cocoa, it contains the precursor tryptophan, and boop, you have, you have serotonin. Then you have um, vervine, contains lots of, lots of dopamine. Cow itch, the seed of cow itch contains um, dopamine. The reason why um, stinging nettle would sting is because of the, dopam of the serotonin that it actually secretes. Right? So you also have plenty of different, your, your ganja, all these things uh, um, regulates the endocrine system. So it is very important that um, you focus firstly on your emotional state, right? And then from that emotional state then, then you go on to the, the eating and drinking, the physical things that you could do to uplift these chemicals within your bloodstream. What are your views on the future of the black family when the anti-family culture is being promoted in the music, movies, and mass, me mass media? my views on the black family. Well, I mean, the future, the, the future of the black family, you know, resides in the human, you know, and the biggest issue is that even through science and medicine, the treatment of the human has been horrible, despicable, you know. So I remember at medical school, I was doing my wrongs in gynecology, and I was in, um, in a in a theater whereby a woman was actually giving birth. And the woman who just was just pushing, you know, and the nurse never really took a time out to explain the, what the real process of the pushing. And I literally saw the nurse just put her two fingers like this into the vaginal opening and take a scissors and just clip, you know, and clack and then the woman then just just push and then after 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 delivery, you know, they just came and they just stitch it up, give her some pain, stitch it up, and that's it. You know, so the brutality of how the woman is being treated, if the woman says she has fibroids, then they would say, well, okay, well, um, we need to do an, uh, an, uh, 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 an ultrasound, but you do not just an ordinary ultrasound, but a transvaginal ultrasound. So they're going to take this little machine and stick it up inside of the vaginal canal of the woman and say that they, they're scanning her. If it is that she has a fibroid, they're going to say, well, they're going to do a hysterectomy. They'll just cut her open and then just pull out the womb, you know. So if they say, well, she has breast cancer, they're going to just, just cut off the breast. And these are the things of the woman that really and truly makes the woman feel like a woman. Right? That's why they say the woman. So when you remove the womb from a woman, I mean, you see what happens. So if it is that our, our, our sisters, the woman does not really fully understand the, just the significance of being the one that was chosen by the Creator, right, to actually carry the seed. So the woman has this phenomenal ability, right? So during sexual intercourse, coming together, right, she, she receives the man, literally, right? And she trusts the man, she receives his penis. That's the first thing that she receives. And if she understands that her vagina is a sacred space, this will determine what type of man she's going to allow to enter into this sacred space. 
because this is a sacred space. That's a space that guarantees the continuation of life, right? So when then she, this man ejaculates and delivers that sperm, the inside of the woman's vaginal canal, her womb, literally have, have um, organelles that actually guides and pushes, pulls up the sperm, you know, up to all the ampulla of the fallopian tube to actually meet the egg. Then the collision happens and the woman nurtures this for nine months, 40 weeks, 42 weeks, 44 weeks, right? And then pushes this baby out into life and then allows that baby to suck up on her pups for six, seven, eight, nine, ten months a year, right? Feeds that baby. Yet still, the treatment of the human and the position of the human is one by, whereby the human does not really fully acknowledge her value. And, and one of the biggest and the firmest responsibility and the glory and the honor of the human that was given to her by nature, the creator, is that she was found worthy the stronger one of the two, the more reliable one to carry the seed and to ensure that that seed, that sustainability of life. So to ensure that, that the family is, 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 is secured, right, you must focus upon the woman. Put the woman in that space that she really is supposed to be. You know, put the woman on the throne. So when the Rastaman say Empress, right, so that's the word of it then. Create that environment whereby that woman is being treated in that capacity. So imagine when a woman is menstruating, right? The inner lining of a womb is being stripped off, right? She's going through a trauma inside of the womb. Then she just takes a stay free or a confidence or some other type of sanitary napkin. And most of these sanitary napkins, they, they just recycle paper and they just bleach them to get them white. So they fill with endocrine disruptors, dioxins, right? And she just serves it there and then she just goes back to work. You know, with bleeding, you know, you know, passing blood, right? So if our system was really, that's why the Rastafari is scientific, because the Rastafari understands that at that stage of the humans, at that point in her existence, she's supposed to be on holiday. She's supposed to be relaxing. She's not supposed to be sweeping, because sweeping affects the womb. That's why after a woman gives birth, she's not supposed to be sweeping. Right, but our sisters, after they give birth two months afterwards, they're back on the job. Right, so to safeguard the, 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 the family, because it's not just the black family, it's the human family. You know, so it is the oneness in the all. So it's not just focusing on the black family, because every, every nation came from us. You know, so we are the, the mothers and fathers of, of every nation. You know, so it is the, the, the human family, to safeguard the human family. The position of the woman has to be re-established. That woman has to be given the power, has to be, be able to be allowed to actually manifest a full creative potential whereby she could take things and make them even better things. So I would say to safeguard the black family and to, to, to bring forth the family into its true position, let's focus on the woman. Many of our people are burdened by the lifestyle diseases. What advice would they give to one to want to transition to a healthier lifestyle? Well, lifestyle diseases is what they would refer to as the non-communicable chronic illnesses. So, you firstly, you become logical. What is a lifestyle disease? That's a disease you get based upon your lifestyle, right? So if diabetes is a lifestyle disease, high blood pressure is a lifestyle disease, most of the cancers are lifestyle diseases, then what we, cre what we do as scientists is say, well, what lifestyle does a diabetic actually live? What lifestyle does a hypertensive actually live? What lifestyle does someone with prostate cancer actually live? Then you critically analyze the lifestyle that gives them the disease, and then you, you go to, you shift the polarity. So if it is that a diabetic is one who gets that disease because they, of what they eat, how they think, they're always upset, right? So you have to change that. So the first step in dealing with lifestyle diseases is changing the lifestyle. So the only reason that your cholesterol is high is because you are intaking cholesterol. So if you want to change that, you change your lifestyle by stop taking in cholesterol. If it is that you have high blood pressure, right, it's because of your lifestyle. Maybe, maybe every morning when you get up, you eat bread and cheese, you know, and you, and you put lots of sodium inside of your physical structure. So the lifestyle that would lead to, to high blood pressure 
is what we refer to as a sodium high diet. Right? So if you want to control it, you go on a sodium low diet. So you always shift to the polarity. Let's see the lifestyle that gets our people sick and let's put them on the lifestyle that will actually help to eradicate these conditions. Please speak about the role of one part in maximizing one potential in this life. The mastering of the mind is, is basically the task that you are bringing, you are brought into creation to master your mind. Having full control of your thoughts allow you to dictate what your future is. Right? So, they say uh, an idle mind is the playground of Satan. Okay? So, the first step in thought management is being able to control what you're thinking. Because if you understand that, what you think would dictate how you feel. All right? So, if you are thinking of positive things, these positive things would have a particular biological reality in your bloodstream. Meaning that, if it is that you are happy, you're thinking of happy stuff, oh boy, I had a wonderful day today. Yeah, man, I, I give thanks for life. Oh yes, man, I went by the river, look at the sun, it's beautiful. Right, these thoughts and these types of meditation, what it does now, it actually floods your physical structure, specifically with hormones that actually help to boost up your immune system, right? So if it is that you have negative thoughts, these thoughts is what would actually shut down your immune system, raise your blood sugar levels, right? Increase your heart rate, right? All these different aspects. So that's why um, they say, well, if you're cooking this, this beautiful feast and the feast is, is right there on the table and you are, you, are you, are, you are just about to feast and then you get this bad news that says, well, well, something happened over there. What's going to happen? You know, even if you love whatever in front of you, that's your favorite feast but you got some bad news, what happens? Can you eat that? No, you can't eat it because the emotions, what it does now, the negative emotions, right, naturally just locks down the digestive system. So it is very important now. That's why we link directly um, um, gastric issues with stress. Um, fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome. A woman who, who has been abused, right? Maybe she was raped, she was molested or her father never gave us no hugs, or she was in a, in a relationship where she was just spoken down upon, right? What happens is that this woman now, whenever she goes back into that time, that space, she, she recalls and says, well, I remember when it is that, oh, my, or, or she sees her father, she say, oh, this man that dealt with me horribly, da, 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 or, or if she was raped, and then she say, why, why, why did I go into that space? Da, 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 da. So the remembrance of that event what it, brought, what it brings to her is a bad feeling. Now, if you understand that, bad, the reason that you feel bad is because you produce particular biochemicals within your bloodstream that makes you feel bad, which are called the stress hormones, right? Very important. Okay, now, if it is that you are feeling good, then what would be produced is the feel-good hormones like use the serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. So if you understand, well, look, a woman has been traumatized and she's always living in that trauma, right? Then she's going to get estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance mean is the female hormone. Then what's going to happen is that because the womb is very responsive to estrogen, she's going to grow fibroids in the womb, what they call leomyomas. Right? Because estrogen is what is responsible for the thickening of the uterus lining, the endometrium. Because of high levels of stress, right? then you have an increase in cortisol. Then from cortisol you have testosterone. So she'd also get masculinized. So you'll see that she has two or three strands of beard. Now, because from testosterone you get estrogen, then you have an increase again in estrogen. So the, the, the inner layer of the womb called the endometrium begins to grow on the outside of the womb then they say she has endometriosis. Why? It's because the womb is bombarded with estrogen. Now the pancreas is receptive to estrogen. That is why when a woman is, is pregnant, she develops what they call gestational diabetes. That's because just because she's pregnant, her, the level of estrogen is, is, is all the way up there, right? What happens is that the pancreas gets bombarded, it produces more insulin, she gets insulin resistance. During pregnancy, she's a diabetic. And after pregnancy, when the estrogen levels begin to go down, she begins to get normal. When a woman is pregnant, what happens to her breast? It gets big, right? Because estrogen stimulates glandular production. So if it is that 
during pregnancy you have high estrogen and your breast gets big, if it is that you are exposed artificially to estrogen, right, or you are always stressed out and because of your stress you increase in your estrogen levels, that means that you are going to increase, right, whatever mutations happening in your breast. So because of high levels of estrogen, you're going to have increased activity within the breast so you could develop glandular carcinoma of the breast. Right, so your mental state, that's why when someone comes with cancer, you're not like, say, well, drink this bush, you're going to have cancer, or drink this, or somebody is infertile, or somebody has polycystic ovarian syndrome, or she has fibroids, the first step is to put your mind in that right space. Because no matter what you drink, what you eat, you could go and do a surgery and take out the womb today, less than two months that same fibroids, or you're going to develop breast cancer, or you're going to develop some other type of aspect because you've not dealt with the cause. So the thoughts are instrumental. Same with the man. A man who has dealt with rejection, right? What it does now, if a man has always been rejected, da, 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 this man has a high propensity of developing prostate cancer, right? Because naturally, when a man turns 40, his estrogen levels begin to rise and his testosterone levels begin to, to go down, right? So just because of an increase in testosterone, his prostate begins to get bigger, right? Now, if he is exposed to synthetic estrogens, that means that he could actually develop prostate cancer at an earlier age. So understanding how your thoughts, that your thoughts is part of your emotional self that manifests itself through the endocrine system as hormones through your bloodstream that controls whether you are happy, whether you are sad, whether your heart beats fast, it beats slow, whether your stomach could function, whether you could defend yourself against the flu, right? All these things there are based upon what is circulating through your bloodstream. So it's critical to have master over your thoughts. Yeah, because soy contains phytoestrogens, right, it would affect the estrogen levels of the woman, right? So it would actually, so if someone has fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome, breast cancer, she should abstain from, from soy products. Yeah, right, because um, all these things, they are caused by estrogen dominance. And what you must understand is that apart from the food, you have what you call xenoestrogens. These are chemicals that act upon the physical structure like estrogen, like your parabens that you find that in your, in your beauty products, your, your, your talc and your baby powders and all your different things, your, your placental extracts, you know, in your makeups. You know, then you have your aluminum in your antiperspirants, right? Then you have your, your dioxins, then you have your, your atropines. Right, so atrazine, you know, so you have plenty of what you call endo endocrine disruptors that act upon the physical structure. So when it is that you might think it's only what you're eating and drinking, but what you're wearing, you know, what you, how you're thinking, what you clean your house with, you know, so the whole, all the environmental intoxicants is that one, 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 two, three, one, 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 from everything is what actually puts you at risk. So when it comes to, to dealing with these conditions, that's why we operate in a holistic approach, whereby it's a lifestyle change. So it's a complete lifestyle change to naturally eradicate these conditions. So remember, it's, remember that, that it's, it's a deliberate thing, you know? Okay? So some people want for a woman to be fertile. Some people don't want people to be fertile. Right, so if I am going to create a product, I'm going to create it that the woman is fertile. So from the, the position as a businessman that I'm coming from is to create a product that is economically viable, right, but yet still it is um, enhancing, bettering the life of people. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are, I mean, the major, I mean, if you look at the majority of things, I mean, look at cigarettes, man. The, the box says it gives you cancer and, and you smoke it. You know, alcohol is an intoxicating liquor. You know, if you say that, oh, pan, this is intoxicating, you know, what does that mean? It's poisonous, all right? So if something is toxic, it's poisonous. Yet still people buy it and people use it. So, and I mean, does, doesn't the people that do it know that it's intoxicating? Don't they know that um, cigarettes um, give cancer? So isn't it deliberate that you'd be selling something to someone that you know ultimately will actually kill them? So it is for you now as an individual, right, um, to make conscious decisions that is for your betterment, for your upliftment, and don't be suicidal, because then you become suicidal. So the person that smokes the, the cigarette is a suicidal person. 
Even the woman that sits down and thinks negatively all the time she is suicidal. Why? Because she knows that the thoughts or the action would lead to her detriment, but she still repeats it over and over and over again. So there is a very, a very thin line between the, the person who just jumps up a, a, off a roof and shouts Geronimo and kills himself. You know, if, it, if, the, if it's a one-story building, it might take one second. If it's a two-story building, it might take two seconds. If it's a hundred-story building, they might be going down all, for a whole, almost a minute they're falling down, you know, and thinking all types of things before they eventually splatter. All right? So suicide is basically a, a tendency that many of our people are living with. From our diabetics, you know, who know that what they are eating will kill them and they'll still eat it. You know, from the people who have high blood pressure, who knows that these things they will still kill them and they're still utilizing it. So we have to culture a spirit of self-love, overstanding. That's why the, the, the beginning point, the starting point is education. Man, know thyself and do yourself no harm. Many, many, many people are dying. Um, black women too, yes, but many women are dying through childbirth because the process has, has been taken out of the hands of the woman. You know, I have eight children if my empress. You know, we home birth every single one of them. You know, and in medical school, when I saw how they deal with the woman, I said, I'll never let anyone take care of my empress when she's on a hospital bed, right? I will take care of that myself. So because the whole process of childbirth has been taken out of the control of the woman and has been placed into the medical establishment and have been turned into a, into a business, you find out that the core aspect of it, which is the, the care for the woman, that's very lacking, right? So we have helped sisters to deliver children, their first births, it's not one single tear. So you can imagine that. They say, well, well, the first birth is more difficult, so you'll get tears, and no, you don't have to get a tear. You understand? It's when, when, you, when, when the woman is educated enough to understand that, because remember, you know, childbirth is a natural thing, you know. So before childbirth, your womb, literally, would be contracting to push out the baby, all right? You would be pushing to push out the baby. The baby itself would be pushing itself out of the womb. Gravity would be pulling down the baby, all right? So naturally, but they would put the woman to lie down and put her head up and put the, put, put, put the gravity in the opposite direction, number one. So during childbirth, ancestrally, you stoop. You know, to, to, to give birth. Mm -hmm. So at home, you don't, you don't, put, you don't lie down to, 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 to give birth. You stoop to give birth. You understand? So even if a woman is on a toilet, and she, because most times before a woman actually um, um, gives birth, she does feel like she wants to defecate. So even on a toilet, she wants to sit down and she starts to push to, to defecate. The baby will literally be coming out. That's so why you have birthing stools. Right, so even these, these, that all these things are things that actually have taken the power out of the hand of the woman. But when you give the woman back that sense of self-confidence, that knowledge of self, and there's nothing to be afraid about. The horse does do it, the sheep does do it, the cow does do it, the goat does do it, the dogs does do it, the pigs does do it, and then they just do their thing and then they move on. Right, so it is for us now to put that power back into the hands of the woman and create a healthcare system that is sensitive to the care of the woman. Right? Because when I witnessed that they cut the woman like this, she could have had a fit cellar. Because remember, the earnest is just underneath the vaginal opening. Right? So when you just cut, you could cut and just cut the earnest right away. That's why plenty of women after childbirth, I mean, everything is different for them. You understand? So that whole general care for the woman and creating a system that's sensitive to the care of the woman would help to lower the levels of, of, of these issues. And also, one of the key things that that we practice as a family is stretches. Lots of stretches and your diet, the things you actually eat during childbirth, during a, before childbirth, during your pregnancy. So you don't wait until you're ready to push to start to practice. So you have nine months, 42 strongs, 44 strongs to prepare yourself for that whole end process. All right, please speak about the dangers of vegetable and canola oil. What are healthy oils people should use when preparing food? Give thanks. I mean, definitely one of our best oils is coconut oil. You know why? Because coconut grows right here in Jamaica. You could just grater it, you know, and squeeze out the milk. 
you know, put it in the sun, you know, you're gonna get oil. You boil it down, you're gonna get oil. So the best oil for you is the one that you could do yourself, naturally, without using any kind of solvents to actually extract it. If you take a cabbage, or you take um, um, corn, you know, you know how, how, what, how are you gonna get oil, oil from corn? And, and, and oil from soya? and oil from all these different type of things. You have to go through a synthetic, organic, some kind of solvent extraction. You have to use some kind of chemical to draw out, to make some type of thing happen. Canola is nothing that grows in the wild. It is all these things that are genetically modified. You know, so most of these oils there, you know, when you go to the source of it, these things there are very dangerous. You know, so we don't support these things. The best oils, you know, is your palm oils, right? You like the red palm oil, the African palm oil. That's a very potent oil. It contains the highest level of retinol and retinol. I remember when I was in medical school in Cuba, you know, I used to wear glasses. And I met this brother from Guinea-Bissau who had some, some real organic ital um, palm oil that, that, that his mother and them made because they would make it in the village, right? And I used that for about a, a strong in my food. That was probably 2001, 2002. Up to a day like today, I don't wear glasses. You know, and it is something I consumed. So we must understand that your food is your medicine. So even the oil that you use, some of these oils there, man, they're not even fit to go to rub even your flaws with because they'll get into your physical structure. You don't put them on your skin, you know. So the best oils for us is like, you know, avocado oil, you know, coconut oil, palm oil, you know. And if we had some um, olives grown in Jamaica, I'd tell you olive oil, you know. but. Because of what you have here, you use what you have. And since you know you have ganja and ganja decriminalized, you could go into some hemp oil. You know, and you have to look at for, for what you call heat stable oils. Because not every oil you could heat and you could fry. You know, so the coconut oil and the palm oils, they have a higher stability when it comes to the heat. You know, and I would stick to them because these things they are indigenous to us. Why do so many men have erectile dysfunction? What do you recommend they do to heal their issue? If I ask you, if I ask you what's the name of the bone in the penis, what would you say? Do you know the name of the bone in the penis? Right? No. Right? Because the penis has no bone. All right? So the penis has blood vessels. Do you know? So the, 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 the penis has two types of tissue. A cavernous tissue, that means that places with lots of caverns, lots of holes and a spongy tissue. So the erection process is when you have an increase in the level of testosterone, the male hormone, and also you have nitric oxide. Now what it does is that it diverts blood flow to the penis, and it also enlarges the vessels. So an erection is basically blood flowing into the penis in a one-way direction, all right? So as the blood goes into the penis, you have valves that close out. So the pen, that's why the penis does do this when it's erect up and down because the blood is pumping in, but the blood is not getting that, that chance to actually be pumped out. So if you're looking at ED, erectile dysfunction, which is basically when a man has that inability to actually sustain an erection. So even if he might get erected, when he try and start off, you know, it just dies off. You know, that comes from the whole aspect of very poor circulation and low levels of testosterone. Right, and also if a man has a poor level of self-confidence, right, and he's intense distress. If you walk in the street and a dog is chasing you, are you going to be thinking about getting an erection? No, right, so lots of people don't understand that that perpetual level of stress would actually prevent them from even having a proper erection. So as Marcus Gavi said, without confidence, you are twice defeated in the race of life. So even when it is that you, you approach your empress, you know, um, your queen to actually come together. If in your back of your mind, say, boy, you think I'm going to make it today? Well, that's the last time I try, you know? You already lose the race. All right, so it is for you to be able to overstand your physical structure, put your, 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 you in that mental space, right, whereby you overstand that, okay, these are the things that you actually need to do. So to help to boost up your, your erection, you go for herbs that boost up circulation. Right, so like your guinea hen weed, the root of that, I mean, it's an aphrodisiac, right? Um, shame bush. How do you call it here, priest? The shame bush. Shame. Shame. Huh? Shame maca. Shame maca. The shame maca 
is basically one of the herbs that's very important as, a, as what, you'd call, what is, as you'd call an aphrodisiac. The nuni root, you know, which they'll call stiff cock in Jamaica, that also is an aphrodisiac. Right, then you look at things for circulation, like your, your turmeric, like your, your japana, like your carpenter bush. You know, all these things they work upon your circulatory system. You know, so you have like minerals, like your zinc and your selenium, these things that are also instrumental. Right, so in your, in your, in your sea moss and your bladder rock and your, your stinging nettle, you know, all these things that contain high levels of minerals that could help to boost up your erection. You know, so remember it's confidence. You know, without confidence you're twice defeated. So you have to be very positive about what you're doing. You know, and that there is no bone in the penis. The penis operates on a circulatory phenomenon. So you have to make sure that your circulatory system is functioning to the peak to be able to have direction. Yeah? That's Rastafari. Right. Give thanks for life and a mighty life giver. You know, we are in a system whereby the, whether someone lives or dies depends upon how much money they have. The healthcare system is based upon the survival. Your survival in the healthcare system is based upon whether you could afford or whether you can't afford. So if someone has a kidney issue, they might be able to live if they could afford a kidney transplant. If they can't afford it, they might ultimately die. You know, if someone has cancer, then they have to do a dance or do something to raise money just to be able to actually get treatment. So then why is it that the system has to be in a, in a place whereby life and death, happiness, to be dependent upon money? And why is it then someone has to go to a space and they're not well? And that space is a space where the most people just die. So our hospitals are the spaces where the most people just die. So imagine that you are not well and you go into a, a hospital room, an ICU, and you lie down on a bed and someone is lying next to you and someone comes to wrap them up and, and, and roll them out and you wake up in the morning and they're gone. You are in a space of death. How is it that you're going to really be able to get healed? So when we say what we are about is revolutionizing the healthcare system, making it result oriented. So if it is that you are not well, the most logical, the most conducive space for you to be in is in a green space. Fresh water, birds, butterflies, bees, trees, fresh air, right? So we have to put ourselves in a position whereby we could fully embrace what we have and revolutionize the healthcare system. Meaning that, making wellness something that is affordable and available for everyone. Give thanks.